Well, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, thank you for coming in. Um, we've had a lot going on the last couple of sessions. Proverbs 24, saying 27, Do not lie in wait, O wicked people, near the dwelling of the righteous. There's a lot of people that have gotten them into, themselves into relationships with people that degenerate, um, and they're covert. They don't let you know what's going on, how they really feel what their objections are, what their complaints are. And unless you've got some element of discernment and you're following the tracking of the relationship, what the possibilities of ill will might be, you'll be completely caught off guard when these people start to um, monkey branch outside the relationship. They'll emotionally monkey branch. They'll usually have orbiters they're whinging to can start off with their children and then they build on that. They find people on the outside, friends, and then some bloke will come along and um, listen to their complaints about you and then all of a sudden they're um, jumping the fence. They're monkey branching onto somebody else while you're starting to get the, um, not just a silent treatment, but just a, a, a sense that something isn't right. Now these people... <clears throat> They lie in wait to try and find a way of um, undermining the relationship once they've got unresolved because resolve's too, too simple for them. The toxicity won't allow them to find resolve. Usually the unresolved is coming from a family member or somebody close to them. Um, and this will cause them again to want a monkey branch. They're going to want to find soothing away from you because they don't like standards, they don't like boundaries, um, they don't like moral, they don't like integrity. They have to have their shot of toxicity. Now, this will be bringing do dopamine to them, but it will be bringing cortisol to you. So you'll be going down while they're going up, and they think you're blind, these covert narcissistic people, the passive-aggressive, silent types, which are the dangerous types if you've got no discernment. Now, the problem for them is if you're a um, dark empath and you can see into their silent silent um, forms of uh, resentment and bitterness, you can protect yourself. And these people, they'll keep coming. They'll keep coming for the supply They'll keep you as a, a means of supply. Um, they're reaching out behind your back to people that are popping up, exes and um, other people that give them a form of satisfaction against the resolve. Uh, they're rebels by nature. And they, they, they lie in wait near your dwelling or in your dwelling. And they do not. Well, they want to destroy your resting place. They want to upset your peace. That's what they're coming for. Now, I've said to a few of these women, you have not got the power to ruin me or destroy me. And they look at you with a blank look. This is after you've seen the black eyes. Once you see the black eyes, the eyes go black, you're in trouble. There's something going on behind the scenes that you're not aware of and that they're not going to tell you about that's going to hit the relationship hard and destroy your resting place. But if you're a step ahead, you'll see it coming. And that's when you say, ta-ta. Whilst they're always going to have a fear that you will discard them, when you come in swift and hard, because they've come in and given themselves away characteristically and by way of their habits, it gives them a... Uh, narcissistic injury and this will turn them um, against you this will cause them to resent you even more um, and they'll say things like I need to be on my own and this kind of stuff they're already on their own they're, they're never on their own actually they're already withdrawing their behavior wasn't lining up with the standards of the relationship you were um, struggling with what was going on they weren't being honest and transparent and when you've realized that there's things that are going on that are un that are disturbing right that are abusive 
even though they're silent, even though they're not harmful, they're deeply, seriously abusive and it's on purpose. They don't communicate, they don't send texts, they don't reply to texts, they just show up. That's abuse. That's testing you to see how much you'll put up with, to see how much a fool of a fool you are. And they're trying to bring unrest and they know there's an element of it because you're giving complaints. Um, and this could all be trying to, you could be trying to get closer, but there's this undermining factor going on behind the scenes. You know something is not right behind the scenes. They're turning up pissed, stone, medicated, which is not normal behavior. Um, they look nervous. They can look very nervous and unsettled. And they look dislocated. And I'll, I'll just let this siren go past. But they're not being honest about what is really going on behind the scenes. They've got the flying monkeys now starting to swing through the trees a lot faster. There's a lot of noise behind your back. Um... But what they're, what they're not realizing is that just because the darkness can't comprehend the light doesn't mean the light can't comprehend the darkness. It's easy to be 10 steps ahead of these people. Um, if you're awake, a lot of you people aren't awake and that's why you're watching these videos. Um, and you'll watch these covert narcissists start to disintegrate. Even though they're trying not to, they just do because that's the nature of them. They've always had their own way usually. They're not used to somebody rising up and saying, hang on a sec, you're not right here. And it throws them out, it fascinates them. And the fact that you know they're being rebellious is actually in some, some extent a turn on for them because they can't comprehend how you know what they are and what they're doing to abuse you behind your back. And how they can turn up and be accepted and be intimate. This is an incredible turn on for these people. But at the same time, they're pulling away. So they've got the infatuation for the light. Um, but they're pulling away. They're exiting slowly but surely back towards the darkness, back towards their default. Because there's probably too much integrity too many morals, too many standards, they're starting to feel exposed, that the energy and dynamic shifted, and it's causing them like a vampire with a crucifix to retract back to what they're used to, drugs and easy debauchery. They just do whatever they want without any restraint. Now, sorry, I'm doing this in my lunch break. Whilst they're getting their last couple of hits off the light, they've got everything organized in the background. There's probably orbiters and things going on back there. They've got their adult children to fall back on. They've already excommunicated you and tried to defame and vandalize you. It hasn't worked. Just another siren. Hang on. By this time, you're well aware that something's not right. The silence treatment aren't working. At this point, I decided to mirror the person. So if they're not ringing me, I'm not ringing them. If they're, they're, they're. The only thing I had left to do was stop them from coming to my place because <clears throat> I couldn't go to their place. Um, and things just started to come to a head. Now, do not lie in wait, O covert narcissist, near the dwelling of the righteous. Do not destroy their resting place. And you should be able to make sure that don't happen. For though a righteous man may fall seven times, he still gets up, but the wicked stumble in bad times. And that's exactly what's happening. While you're awake and they're trying to make you fall, you're reading what's going on. You're going, hang on a sec, there's something going on here that they haven't been transparent about. There's something going on here that I don't know about, but it's not right. I can smell it in the spirit. You can tell by their behavior in the bedroom. Um, you can tell by their distance in the 
realm outside of that. <clears throat> and this is what happens to narcissists. They just degenerate to the point where they go back through another cycle with somebody else. It's not a, it, they're not good people to have relationships with. It's the most blank, um, boring, in every aspect, relationship I've ever had. You're trying to help this people, these people actually come back to themselves. There's no one there. They're blotted out. They're faking it. They're winging it. They'll tell you they love you when they sense that, you know, it's getting close to being caught. It's so... They just stumble. They stumble back to their addictions, back to their enmeshments, back to their exes. Um, they'll take whatever they can get once you've gotten rid of them, just for supply. They don't come to their senses until the penny drops and they go, uh-oh, did I just spoil something that was good? Um, the penny drops. And then you're, get, you're back up. You're on your way. You, you followed what was going on. You were integral. You tried to do the right thing. But the covert narcissists can't because they don't resolve. What they do is they destroy their resting place and they have to drug up to sleep and that doesn't help a lot. They have many nights of restlessness. I think it's called insomnia. They can't sleep properly. They worry. They stress. The drugs don't help. And they just keep stumbling into bad times. Reckless sex, rec recreational drugs, the devil's lettuce. And it's really, really sad. But guess what? You just keep going on. You just keep being you. <clears throat> I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Awakening people to the disintegrators, the users. Thank you for joining me. And bye for now.